Scootily doodly do, it's time for another Welsh review. Scootily doodly do do. Evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Welch Welch Review. Review. Today we are going to be talking about a little movie called Mortal Kombat. It's uh, the newest, I wouldn't say installment, right? Like, because it's not like a series. No, but but it's it's like the most recent incarnation of Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. Uh, As you know, uh, Paul W.S. Anderson of uh, Resident Evil fame and video game movie fame in general directed the first one. Um, I should have done more research on who directed Annihilation, but he decided not to come back for that one. Uh, but anyway, in this version, the 2021 Mortal Kombat, we have Louis Tan as Cole Young. Now, Cole Young is not a character from the Mortal Kombat universe. He was a character created simply for this movie. Yep. Now, you might know Louis Tan from Deadpool 2. Uh, he was part of uh, X Force. He was Shatterstar. Oh, like okay. briefly, uh, and then he was also in the TV show Into the Badlands. He played Gaius uh, Chow. Gaius Chow, and then he's also on the Netflix sh- series Woo Assassins. Uh, <laughs> Woo Assassins. Woo Assassins. I Woo watched, Assassins. I watched Into the Badlands. Oh, you did? Yeah, I've seen like that. That's the that's like the kung fu one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I watched like all of that. Was um, he okay in it? Which one's Gaius? I, I didn't watch the show. I n- I don't even remember his character. So clearly, this is his big break. So mm-hmm. you know, Louis Todd, not not bad, not too shabby. Um, and then also you have Jessica McNamee. Uh, as Sonya Blade, McNamee, McNamee, I might be pronouncing your name wrong, but... My name is hard. <laughs> uh, she plays Sonya Blade, and she was in the movie The Meg with Jason Statham. Oh, okay. She played Lori, uh, who I believe was his wife. Uh, she was also in the movie Battle of the Sexes, about the famed tennis match between, like, uh, this really, like, uh, sexist male tennis player yep. uh, against... Um, you know, this like up-and-coming, the, ch- the top female player of the yeah. time. Uh, that's a good movie. Yeah. And then she was in the movie Chips um, with Michael Pena and Dax Shepard. Yeah. So she's she's been around, um, but this is more of a, like a like a front-and-center role, I think, for Miss uh, um, Jessica McNamee. And then you have Josh Lawson as Kano, and he, he just... We'll talk more about Josh Lawson and Kano, but you might know him from the movie... Bombshell with Charlize Theron. He played James Murdoch. Uh, he was in the uh, documentary film, pseudo documentary like biography film, Becoming Bond. He played a young George Lazenby. That's cool. Um, and then he was also in the show House of Lies, which was on Stars with Don Keel. Uh, then you have Joe Taslim as Bihan, or better known as Sub Zero. And Mr. Taslim was in the Raid Redemption. Fast and Furious 6, Star Trek Beyond, and the movie and the TV show Warrior on HBO. Okay. So he's he's been in quite a few things. Then you have uh, Mikad Brooks as Jax. Uh, he was in True Blood, Supergirl. He played James Olsen in Supergirl. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, and then he was in the show Glory Road with um, the Disney basketball movie. It slips my mind what the name of that guy is. It'll it'll come to me. Who would the act? Josh Lucas. He was in that movie with Josh Lucas. Um, and then you have Matilda Kimber as Emily, right? And she played uh, Louis Tan's uh, daughter in this. Mm-hmm. And this was her debut film. Her first movie is Mortal Kombat. Nice. And then you have Laura Brent as Allison, who is Louis Tan's uh, character, Cole Young's wife. And she was in the movie Winchester, which is like a ghost story about oh, yeah. all the the you know people who've died by the hands of a Winchester gun. A Winchester rifle, yeah. Yep. And then uh, she was in A Few Best Men and Legend of the Seeker. I have not seen uh, either of those yeah, last yeah, two. Uh, then you have... Ooh, this is exciting. Uh, Tadanabu Asano as Lord Raiden and... He was in a movie that we reviewed uh, back on our uh, YouTube channel. He was in um, uh, The Outsider with Jared Leto. All right. He played... Um, his best friend? Kana- Kaneda. No, not Kaneda. Sorry. He played Kiyoshi. Yeah, his best friend. Nice. His best friend and mentor. And Tadanabu Asano, you're the man. I want to see more of you, dude. You just keep doing good things. And then you have Hiroyuki Sonata as Hanzo Hasashi or Scorpion. 
And Hiroyuki Sonata uh, was in the Wolverine. He played the abusive dad Shinjin. Oh. Yeah. He was also in Forty Seven Samurai. Okay. Or for, no, not Forty Seven Ronin. Yeah, with Keanu Reeves. Bad movie. Ah, I, I liked it. Yeah, but you like bad things. That's that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was also um, on that sci-fi show about playing God, Helix. Okay. Uh, and then you have Chin Han as Shang Tsung. And he was in the movie Contagion, The Dark Knight. He played the the crooked accountant Lao. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and then he was in the show Marco Polo on Netflix. Um, and then you have Ludi Lin, who played Liu Kang. And Ludi Lin is Liu Kang? Ludi Lin is Liu Kang. His name sounds like he's a character already. Yeah, he does. Ludi Lin. Yeah. Fatality. Right? So uh, Ludi Lin was also the Black Ranger, right? He was uh, Zack. Okay. In the new Power Rangers movie. That's cool. He shouldn't call the Black Ranger. He was the Black Suited Ranger. No, he's the Black Ranger. The Black Suited yeah, Ranger. It's okay. All right. Um, and then you. He was also an Aquaman, and he was in um, the, the the new TV show Kung Fu that's coming out on the CW, right? Uh, which is actually based on a Bruce Lee show that he didn't get to make because he passed away. Oh no no no! What happened was Hollywood stole it and gave it to a white dude. Instead of letting him be the star. Right. There's a TV show called Kung Fu with an actor named David Carradine. Yeah, but where's that James... Not that James... That Bruce Lee TV show. What, 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 Warrior. Like, Warrior. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, one of the... Which is where um, Joe Taslim is from that show. Okay, cool. So they both have ties to Bruce Lee films. But the That's original cool. Kung Fu, they were like, That's a great idea, but we're not going to put you in it. So they put a white guy in it instead of Bruce Lee. That sucks. Yeah, it does. Real messed up. Then you have Max Huang. <laughs> Huang. I like Huang. But anyway, Max Huang as Kung Lao. And, uh... How much Huang do you have? <laughs> uh, Max, Max Huang. Alright, sorry, uh, Max Huang. And he is part of the Jackie Chan stunt team. Nice. Yeah, so that's, like, what he does. And then they're like, hey, you want to be Mortal Kombat? He's like, bet. Nice. Um, and then you have... The Jackie Chan stunt team. Yeah, man. That's cool. Then you have Cece Stringer as Melina, and this is only her third film. Yeah, she doesn't have a big role in this, but no. like, she has talking lines. She was in something called Bloody Hell, uh, and then a Children of the Corn film. Oh! Fun. So, you know, she's getting there. And then you have <laughs> Mel Jarnson as Natara, the chick with wings, and was like, ah! Yeah. yeah. She, don't uh, she, was, <laughs> she was in something called Haro. Between Two Worlds with Nicolas Cage. The, or maybe not that. But uh, this is her first feature film. Nice. Yeah. And then... Oh my god. I promise we're almost done. And How then you have people are in this? Well, I'm trying to get like where you might have seen them from. But then you have Nathan Jones as Raikou. Uh, and he was in... Or like the guy with the hammer. Yeah. It really is pointless. I hated character. him. But anyway, he was in the movie Fearless with Jet Li. He played the racist British guy he had oh, to fight. okay. Uh, he was also in Mad Max Fury Road. He played a, a, a mutant Joe's son, uh, Rictus Erectus, the guy who had like like the baby formula thing hooked oh, up to his nose. He was that dude. Rictus Erectus, <laughs> man. And then you have uh, Angus Sampson, who is the voice of Goro, and he was also in Mad Max Fury Road, except he just played a mechanic. Oh, okay. So Not he probably did some work on Rictus Erectus's ride. Probably. And then you had Damon Harriman as the voice of Cabal. Now, Damon Harriman played Charles Manson two separate times. Once on the Netflix show, Mindhunter, and then in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's how you know you're going to be a bad guy in a movie. Like, oh, you're going to play Charles Manson. Marilyn Manson, sorry. No, Charles. Charles Manson, sorry, I'm bad at names. Marilyn Manson's equally bad, but Charles is in jail for killing people. Oh, that's like, yeah... You're going to be Charles Manson. And then another dude, like, four years later is like, what if you're Charles Manson again? <laughs> again. Right? Yeah. Like, you're so good at playing a creep, you're going to keep playing that Yeah. Uh, and then this is all based on the video game series created by Ed Boon and John Tobias. Mm -hmm. um, the story for this movie was by Oren Udzil and Greg Russo. And the screenplay was by Greg Russo and Dave Callahan. And it was produced by James Wan. And James Wan wrote and directed Saw. Uh, he directed Aquaman, Fast and Furious 7, right? So he's like, he's a pretty big to do. And the Insidious 1 and 2 and Conjury 1 and 2. Yeah, James Wan. And then it was directed by Simon, Simon McQuaid. Yeah, um, so... So that's like 
Who's yeah. who? Where you seen them? Where you haven't There's seen them? Too many damn people in this movie. Yeah, I should have just focused on like the heavy hitters. No, that's cool. But anyway, see, I'm like, I feel like most of the you cats out there have played Mortal Kombat, seen the '90s films, or like know people who play it and have seen the '90s films. But anyway, Truth. what's like? Because this is a little bit different, and I don't know. I don't think it dips in spoiler territory. But how would you describe? Like, the setup of this flick. Uh, the setup? What do you mean? Like, the plot? Or, like, yeah. okay, so setup. Like, the premise. Um, I think that it has some really cool scenes. Um, the opening scene, in particular, is really good. It has Scorpion, uh, before he is Scorpion, he's just Hanzo at the time, uh, fighting, um, something, uh, oh my Bihan. god, Bi Bihan, yeah, Bihan, uh, who's also Sub-Zero, um, and, you know, he has Sub-Zero powers, but Scorpion just has, like, a knife tied to a rope. Like, he can't teleport, he can't breathe fire, he can't, um, sh throw chains into people and shout, get over here. Get over here. Um, he doesn't even know English, like, how is he gonna say that? <laughs> um, you know, he's in Japan. Like, Edo-era Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, um, doesn't go well for Scorpion's family, or Scorpion. Um... <laughs> But what he does do uh, is he passes on his, like, Mortal Kombat tattoo invitation birthmark thing down his bloodline um, to our main character, Cole, um, who I don't think needs to exist personally, but I'll comment on that later. Um, so anyways, Cole is, like, some dude who is, like, an MMA fighter um, in... Where, where even is he? Somewhere north. Like, it snows there. No, no, no. It's snows, comment on it, it snows because of Sub-Zero. It snows because of Sub-Zero, but he they comment on, like, oh, it's the summer. It's not supposed to be snowing. Yeah, because of Sub-Zero. Well, yeah, but that I just presume that it snows there because they're commenting on the fact that it's weird that it's snowing oh, this time see, of year. If it was, like, California, they'd be like, whoa, it's snowing. Oh, uh, that's right. I thought he said he would... No, because in the end he says, whatever, you're right, you're right. Anyways, so, um... We got Cole... He loses a fight. Cool. Nobody cares. Cole, you're bland. Uh, then we cut to uh, like the netherworld where Sub-Zero is told that he has to go and hunt down all of the warriors uh, of, of Earthrealm. Yes. Um, and kill them before the tournament can start. That way Netherrealm can invade Earthrealm. Um, because Earthrealm's lost, like, a lot of Mortal Kombat competitions, um, or tournaments, I should say. So, if you just murder all of the contestants before they get to compete, then, like, you know, you're in pretty good shape. You can't really lose in that, in that instance. You know, nobody to fight against, guess you automatically win the competition. Uh, so Sub-Zero is hunting down all of these different contestants, and Cole happens to be one of them because he got, uh... Um, so, not some zero. Sorry. The boy with the dragon tattoo. The boy with the dragon tattoo. He gets it from Scorpion, uh, aka Hanzo. He like inherits it through his bloodline, or some stuff that nobody else gets to have. Like nobody else gets that luxury besides Cole. You special butterfly, you. Um, so, anyways, Cole's getting hunted by Sub Zero. Um, then out of nowhere, Jack shows up and is like, "Hey." That guy's trying to kill you. Get in the car. And he's like, okay. So he gets in the car and they drive away. Uh, and then Sub-Zero finds them again. So Jax gets out and fights Sub-Zero. Doesn't go well for Jax. This is how he loses his arms. Um, moving on from that. Um, who do we have? Cole goes and finds... What's the blonde lady's Sonya name? Sonya Blade. Sonya Blade. Uh, who does not have an invitation yet. Um... And is like, oh, we gotta. Well, Sonya Blade's like, oh, we gotta figure out what these tattoos are all about. And uh, she has a lovely Australian man strung up in like the back of the shack that she lives in. Uh, and, Kano. And his name is Kano. Uh, Kano is like like the, the stereotypical like wise ass character, and like he's funny. He steals the show a lot. He's a pretty cool... Well, no, he's actually a horrible person, but he's good at murdering things. He's bad at fighting, good at murdering things. Um, so, they get attacked by Reptile. That's its name, right? Or is it yeah, Re Reptile. Reptile. Sorry, I'm bad at names. Which is probably, like, I thought, like... There's a lot of characters. This is though. the best 
I thought, like... Reptile it, had been portrayed? Yeah, the best iteration of this character. Like, I know in the 90s, they, like, tried to make it look cool, but the CG was bad. This, like, yeah. looked like, you know, one of them baby Godzillas from the Matthew Broderick movie. When you could see him, because sometimes he's invisible. Yeah. Uh, uh, and now that I'm thinking about this, there's a lot of spoilers. But anyway. Alright, so anyways, they fight um, that guy. Not going to tell you what happens. Moving on. Kano helps get them a plane to fly to the middle of nowhere to figure out uh, where Raiden is so that they can get taught about how to fight in uh, this tournament and to figure out what the tournament is, to figure out a whole bunch of stuff, right? They don't really know anything. They just know that uh, sometimes people who have these tattoos have superpowers. Uh, and they're like, well, where do we get ours? Um, so they fly in the middle of nowhere, and then out of nowhere, the man himself, not Raiden, um, Shung Zhao. Not Shung Zhao. Shang. No, 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 no. The, what, what? I, I'm bad at names. Guy with fireball and kicks. Oh, Liu Kang. Kang. Yeah, Liu Kang shows up and he's like, "Yo, glad you showed up. Let's go see Raiden." This is the way. Yeah, this is the way. Let's go see Raiden. Real convenient. So they go over. They see Raiden. Um, Raiden's like, "You're all useless. I hate you." And <laughs> then Liu Kang starts training them. With his adopted brother who has a hat that he throws at people. That's his cousin. His cousin. His, adopted his cousin brother, brother adopted. Co cousin, yeah, they're both adopted by monks. Um, so Frisbee hat. Yeah. So they start learning how to summon their arcanum, which is like their magical powers, right? It's, it's really just how they use their special moves from the video game. Um, you know, like fireball or... Apparently, sometimes it's throw hat. Well, that's real. That, that, or, that's or if you're, real I, I'm sure it is. But if you're Kano, it's shoot, shoot laser beam. I'm not going to give away all the other ones. Cole's the only one who isn't in a video game because he's fake. So I'm not going to give away his power. Um, but it's lame. It's pretty lame. Um, so, ultimately, NetherRealm's like, Hey, we don't like this. You're training people. So they show up and they try to kill them. Uh, and then that's where we're going to stop for today, because, well, at least with this explanation of the plot, because the rest is just kind of like the entire movie. So, uh, yeah, uh, they don't really ever get to the tournament in this film, but they do fight a lot of people, as you could tell by the, uh, the laundry list the, of people. The laundry list of actors. Mm. Uh, speaking of which, do you think that the... Do you think that the depth that they went in for, like, the number of characters was needed? Or do you think that it was just, like, kind of too much fan service? Um, so, like, growing up, you and me played more Tekken than anything. Yeah. So, I can't say... You know, I was familiar with all of them. Yeah. Like, the names I know is just from the 90s movie. Yeah. Right? But, like, I think it's cool that they're showcasing, you know, some characters who weren't featured in films before. Yeah. You know? Um, but I see what you're saying with fan service. It's like, oh, look, we have all these people stacked on deck. But then they don't do anything. R right. Yeah. Right. They don't. And, like, obviously, they, I think they still have more, you know, for the sequel because, like, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat 2 is happening. They are moving forward with the second one. But, uh, yeah, I think it, it was maybe a little too much show, you know, and not enough, like, tell. Yeah. Right? It was more like, look at all, we're doing it. We have all of them. And they're, I get it. They're not being used yet. But I also think some characters were, like, shoehorned in. Yeah. You know, like, I thought Cabal, right, who seemed pretty humorous in his own right. But I thought, like, it was like, oh, we need him to do this, and then that's it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but they, and they could have used more. Like, I think Goro should not have been, in like, this film. in this film. Like, yeah. the scene with Goro, like, it was cool, but it's like... I don't know. He's man. supposed to be like one of the big bads in like the verse, and they're just like, "Hey, you're in the movie. Yeah, you're the bad guy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like, oh, that's you. But like now, you know, I don't know. Sorry about that bad commentary for a second there. On my what part. are your thoughts? So my thoughts. Um, basically, I think most of the characters were kind of uh, poorly portrayed. Uh, like whoever the dude with the hammer is. Raiko. Raiko. They say his name like twice, maybe. He has no talking lines, uh, and he doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. Like, as a character, he doesn't look good. I don't know how faithful he is to 
to his character. Maybe maybe the character is just kind of weird looking in the game, uh, but I didn't like the way that he looked in the movie. I thought that some of the characters looked really good, like the ones that they actually paid attention to. Yeah. You know, made sense, looked good. Um, I think that our main boy, Liu Kang, kind of looked like a string bean. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, not that he has to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger or anything, but he, like, he was definitely, like, really toned, but he wasn't, like, intimidating. It was... I guess in going with that, right, like, definitely, yeah, he's just real muscular, very minimalist in, like, you know, uh, body type, right? Like, it wasn't trying to shoot for over the moon. So I thought Lu, Lu Kang was believable. I didn't really uh, believe Cole Young. I didn't really like the way Lu Kang looked. That That's, I guess, what I'm saying. I would have preferred if he looked more like Cole Young. Okay. Uh, I didn't like Cole Young as a character. I thought he was trash, but... Um, like, I, I thought the focus should have been more on, on Liu Kang versus, exactly. like, Cole Young. Cole Young is just, like, I don't know, I guess a plot device to keep the story moving. Well, it's like the same thing that they did with Monster Hunter, right? They just shoehorned in a random character that doesn't have anything to do with the plot of the, of, of the, well, the games or the story itself. And they're like, this is an important person now. Like this character. Uh, and Cole is just a very stereotypical, bland character. He, like, um, he, he gets, like, super depressed after, like, flying to, like, the middle of nowhere and gets teleported back to his family, even though one of the reasons why he left his family <laughs> is so that Sub-Zero would stop hunting and trying to murder him and use his family against him. Right. So, like... He immediately, like, they immediately murder off, like, kill off that, that storyline. The the mere fact that he has a family, uh, like, it, it doesn't serve any purpose, right? Like, he basically doesn't care the entire time that he's away from them. He's never, like, sad about it. Uh, he doesn't talk about them. He's not like, oh, I need to learn my Arcanum to protect my family. Not, you know, like, that, that doesn't happen while he's training. Right. Um, so their existence is just kind of like trying to get people to care more about him mm. through like visual, um, like very basic visual cues, right? Very stereotypical, like, oh, look, he has a family. Oh, look, he's a good father. Oh, look, he uh, trains. Oh, look, he's related to, to Scorpion. Aren't you excited about that? He's Scorpion's great-great-grandson. Um, and it's like, no, just give me more Scorpion. Yeah. Like, you know, like, nobody goes and is like, oh, look, that's Julius Caesar's great-great-great-great-grandson when the other option is seeing Julius Caesar, you know? Um, it's just silly. No, I think that's definitely, like you're saying, I think it was a mistake to put the focus so much on uh, Cole, rather than, like, some of these other heroes. Like, even if it was, like, Jax and just Sonya trying to find, you know, Raiden's, like, training headquarters, I would have been cool with that. Yeah. Right? And then they stumble upon, stumble upon, uh, Liu Kang and, you know, Frisbee Hat Cousin. Like, that would have been fine, you know, so I agree with that. Um, what I do think, right, so I think most, all the other people were pretty believable, Aside from, you know, unfortunately Cole, but Kano. Every single scene that guy was in, he stole it. I think that he did a lot of the time. Um, I think that some of the time he runs into, the, like, the same issue that Cole does. Like, he just has very, like, kind of stereotypical ideas, right? Like, he's just, like... Uh, oh, look, there's a lady in the scene. Let's make lady jokes. You know, like, and don't get me wrong, like, his character is believable and he's consistent the whole movie, which is good. Um, and he is funny. Like, I'm not going to say that he isn't. I, I, I enjoyed his character. But, um, yeah, there are some, type, some times where it's just like, this is just kind of basic. Right. You know, like, he, fa he fills in, like, the wise-ass archetype. That's who he is. That's who he is. Um, uh, well, I guess then if we're, like, the other characters per se, I thought, like, L Raiden, I thought Raiden was cool. I like that they didn't whitewash the character. Yeah, um, 
I can agree with that. I think that the only pushback on that is that in the games, the character is white. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, um, at least I'm pretty sure. I'll have to double check. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure Raiden, like, is normally depicted as a white dude. Um, so, like, yeah, I, I can... Well, I like that they didn't go that route. I can agree, like, you know, reclaiming a character based off of what the ethnicity should be makes sense. Yeah. You know, like, that's not a bad thing. Uh, you know, I thought he did a really good, uh, Tadana Nobu Asano, I thought did a really great job. I think another one, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata, right? Hanzo Asashi, yeah. right? Scorpion. They're definitely, like you said, they teased Scorpion a lot. They gave us a little taste of it. I, like, there needs to be more, right? Like, I think this is a role, right, where he's played, like, a bad guy, a semi-likable dude, but, like, he needs that role where it's like, yo, it's Scorpion, you know, like, cements him as, like, that's good. Yeah. Like, you, that's good. You're good at that. I don't know if they're going to bring him back, though, because he says, like, you know, at, at one point... Spoilers! I, yeah, never mind. Uh, I just don't know if they're going to bring him back, and you'll have to watch the movie to find out why. I hope that they do, because I think that um, the portrayal of Scorpion was really good. Uh, I think that the portrayal of Sub-Zero was really good. I think the portrayal of Jax was really good. Sonya was really good. Like, there's a lot of characters that they get right. Uh, it's just the ones that they get wrong are just, like, either, like, a side note character. Like, they're a big name with, like, nothing to them, which is how a lot of it's going to be. Um, I think that it works better in a tournament arc, though. Yeah. Um, or they looked kind of dumb. Uh, like, for example, um, not Katana, but her twin there. Melina. Melina. Um, her mouth wasn't exactly the way that Melina's is in the game, like, the whole time. Uh, there's a scene where her mouth looks like Melina's mouth, right? It, like, expands, uh, and it has, like, the messed up teeth. She always has messed up teeth, but her, like, mouth isn't, like, awkwardly too big. Um... For most of the film. Uh, so I would have liked to see that. Because that's kind of her only real calling card. Right? That's the only thing that really. Like stands out as Melina. Uh, besides that she like. Wears like a mask. On uh, like on her mouth. To, right. to hide it. Um, so yeah. I, I would have appreciated if they played that up a little bit more. Okay. Well I mean. She. Uh, well, okay. Hopefully in the sequel. It's hard. Because you don't want to give anything. Uh, away. Yeah. Uh, but I do know the dude who signed, who plays, uh, you know, his public knowledge, the guy who plays Sub Zero has signed on for like three or four movies. Oh, dang. So, like, they're, they totally envision this as like a cinematic universe. Yeah. You know, and it seems that's what they're building toward. Uh, I would say, like, you know, as weak perhaps as the portrayal of Lewis, uh, you know, of Cole Young is, right, that character, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, and tell me your thoughts as well, but, like, up to, like, you know, the falling action, right, like, after they decide, oh, Nether Realm, not Nether Realm, uh, Outer Realm, right, because Nether Realm's where Scorpion is. Yep. So Outer oh, Realm. Oh, yeah, Outer Realm, sorry. Outer Realm isn't playing, you know, fair by the rules, right, so then, like, they're like, oh, we can, we'll do what they do, right? You can, you can teleport us anywhere, right, Raiden? Yeah. And, like, once that line is dropped and it's kind of like, you know, the, the typical, we need to unite together type Oh, my scene, God. It's like... I wanted to shoot myself during and that scene. all, the, yeah, everything, like, you, you had me going up and, and then that happened and then it was kind of like, eh. Well, there's, there's two parts of that that are, like, gross, right? Like, one, Cole's character was, like, the punk, like, not, not like he was punk, but he was, like, the punk bitch of the group, like, nobody was taking Cole seriously, then all of a sudden they're like, oh, Cole's giving an inspiring speech, everybody, we need to band together to fight back, um, and then at the same time, uh, they had been under siege, by the uh, the outer world inside of like this monastery for days, and Raiden could have just teleported them away <laughs> at any given point. Well, it's like Gandalf in the in the Eagles. It's like, why don't you do the things you can do, man? Maybe the Eagles did. We got tired. Sam, 
Not an excuse. Maybe the Eagles uh, had a mutual agreement that they don't want to go near. Or perhaps Raiden's like, I don't want to exhaust my power, and besides, this will show me who's real and who's fake. Yeah, but... In terms of skill level. I don't know, that seems pretty dumb for an omnipotent, like, god of a planet. I, I mean, I'm not Maybe saying... Maybe not omnipotent, but, you know, like, the protector of an entire realm. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying he's like, huh, if these are my knights that are going to help me protect it, we're going to find out who's who's the, who's the for real and who's just, you know, playing around because well, they'll die. That backfired. You know, which is messed up. But I agree. I think, like, everything you said is spot on, and it was just lame. It was lazy writing. It's like you had a chance to do something... Like, different, right? They were on the ropes. They weren't sure of themselves or where they're going to go. And, and that's the typical, you know, unite together trope to, to defeat darkness. Um, however, I will say within the, those, like, cut scenes or montage of fighting, I really enjoyed that, like, the characters would say what the announcer would be like, fatality! Or, like, you know, yeah. finished him. Or, like, little, like, cheesy one Well, no, it was, like, like, one of, uh, it wasn't finished him. It was, like, some dude was, like, finish him. Uh, it was the, the dude, the, like, ruler guy from Outer World. He'd be, like, finish him. Mm. Uh, which he said about, I think, Jax. But you'll have to see how that goes. But, like, when someone says, someone says fata fatality. Yeah. And, like, that's, like, it's a little cheeky smile. And you're like, yeah, I'm about that. Like, it's kind of lame, but it also connects to, like, the game that it's based off of, which makes it fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the whole movie, right, you're waiting for Scorpion. And there's a moment where a specific line is said, and you're like, ah, yeah. you said it. Yeah. You know? Um. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess just overall, I wasn't very impressed with this film. I thought that it was uh, bad, <laughs> but it had some fun scenes uh, in it. Um, it had some okay fights. And I actually, yeah, I think that's really all I can say. Some of the characters were fun. Some of the portrayals of the characters were cool. Um, but I didn't actually like it. I got you. It's, it's like, it's not even. You know, it's not even by any means, because, like, there are some parts that are really good, and then they're, like, when it's bad, it's, like, really bad. Yeah. And, you know, and I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to world build, and, you know, I don't know. They, it's definitely, I think, an upgrade from, you know, Annihilation, right? The, the sequel to the 90s. It turns one. into a dragon. I, I get it, but the CG is bad and doesn't hold I, up. I have to go back and rewatch those. It's been, like, a long time. You know, but, like,. You know, with the sequel coming out, I think they've now dipped their toe in the water. They're like, okay, we know where we messed up. Ideally, they know where they messed up. And, you know, they'll remedy that in the second one. Yeah. You know, so fingers crossed they can do that. But, you know, you're not going anywhere. It's a rainy day, what have you. You feel like watching some people get their backs broke and have a cool frisbee hat or laser eye beams. Watch the Tekken movie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, perhaps give it a peek if you if if you're just a fan of the '90s ones and you're like, yeah, they're still they're making another one. Throw it on. Yeah. Or yeah, watch Tekken instead because it's by far the more superior fighting game and a better movie. Yeah. This has been the Welsh Review. We'll see you next time. <laughs>